then do we take a roll call? Do we, do we don't need to for attendance. Um, we don't even need to really for votes. Okay, it's 6.30 and we'll start the meeting. And uh, I guess first up is transfer. Is that what we're doing? Okay. Where are we going next? <laughs> Wherever you want to sit. Where? Thank you, sir. This, this is going to be quick. So, no real changes. Uh, that was quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. The, yeah, exactly. the, the, uh, the Quonset Hut, um, I'd like to leave it on there. Um, we don't have a set date. It said on here 2021, but that pushed that out a couple of years. You know, sometime within the next two or three years. By getting the container that we got, um, if you've been down there, you've seen the big I call it a sea lane container, but the shipping container. That's worked out really well as far as our overflow or from the existing ones at hot that we have. So um, that kind of pushed us out a little bit as far as the real need for the other one. The other one was going to cover the appliances, and it's working out fine. They don't stay there that long. Yeah, they, well, I couldn't stay that long. Six months maybe, depending on when we get uh, enough. We're going to have a minimum of 25 with Freon in them to uh, have a company come in and evacuate the Freon. Then we turn them into scrap metal. We just throw them in the scrap metal bin. So, you know, that happens probably twice a year. Uh, small appliances that don't have Freon in them, stoves and things like that, those will pretty much immediately run into scrap metal. So, I did have on here for a forklift uh, that we talked about last year. Mm -hmm. But we have, we did get approval on, high, on the highway side for the new little articulating loader. Um, that's going to, with that, the skid steer is going to be more dedicated to the transfer station, but we also could use that little loader to get better visibility for loading trucks and stuff too. So I don't see a need of having three pieces of equipment with forks on them. Uh, technically four because the big, uh, big backhoe has forks as well, but that won't fit in a trailer. So. So do you think the forklift comes off the plan? I think you could safely take it off yeah. because if we're going to need it, we could plan down the road again. It's not, it's not a crucial piece. I mean, it was one of those, I think last year when I talked about it, I was still up in the air whether it was a, a need or a want. It's still a, a want, but I really think with, with what we get coming, we're going to be fine. Okay. Um, Back to the Quonset Hut, I don't have any new numbers on it. I know they haven't gone down in price. So if you wanted to take the forklift off and put 5,000 of that towards the Quonset Hut, because I know things are going up, we're still 5,000 for the better, <laughs> as far as the two items that I had on there. What's an ideal year for the Quonset Hut? I mean, oh. as, far as, as far as me. It's hard to tell. Um, is, is, is anything suffering now because yeah. we don't have it? Is not really. Not really. Once again, it's, it's, it's closer to a need than a want, but we're doing fine without it, really. So, so what's the gain if you've had it? It keeps, the, it keeps the water and whatnot off of the appliances, but it really, you know, water and snow. But the way that I try to schedule things, I try to get rid of all the appliances just before snow. So I sat out winter with an empty bay, empty, you know, an empty spot. I mean, there's not a lot of appliances that come in when the, you know, in the winter time. You get the refrigerators and uh, items that people have to replace. Uh, you, you know, you get that type. Most of what we get is air conditioners. Mm. I mean, we get a ton of air conditioners. But we charge for them. Yes. Them. Yeah, we charge for all those items that come in. Anything with free. Well, we charge basically for all of our appliances that come in. And the appliances themselves, we gain money when we, we, when we load up. Yeah, it's not huge money. Cause but there's no loss of value because they're sitting out in the weather. I no. mean, it's not a condition no. thing dependent. It's, it's no. a weight thing for white, white, white. Yeah, weight. yeah. Um, they, they, don't really, they don't really hold water as far as making pools for mosquitoes and things like mm -hmm. that. That's the big thing you got to watch for. Uh, tires are mandated in the state of New Hampshire to be covered. For years they weren't. We took one of our, I think it was a 40 or 50 yard roll off we had that we weren't using. 
We put a roof on it. We just put a very simple two by four roof and some screw. Actually, the metal that's on it came from the old highway building that was torn down. We put that on it, and that keeps the water off the tires. And the tire guys love it too because they can now throw them in the truck without getting soaked. But tires would hold water. They make, they're basically little vertical pools, and you get mosquitoes and other bugs like that that like to grow in water. So that, you know, that's been taken care of. Uh, the appliances, it's not that crucial that way. So and as far as any of these balers, you, you don't see They're all any? fine right now. Okay. Yeah, we, I think we, you had them projected for they're, 30. They're quite a ways out. They are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then and no major a, repairs on anything? No major failures? No. No. We had a hose that went on one of them. Uh, might have been really early this year or late last year. That's normal wear and tear. What are the ages currently of those? I don't know. They were here when I got here. Um, uh, is it on the list? Yeah. So the horizontal one we got um, maybe in 2018, but it was used. That was used when we got it. Yeah. yeah. There's really not a lot to go wrong with them. Was it used much. for refurbished or was it? It was used? refurbished. So it had been? Yep. Yep, been gone through. So it was updated. Yep. And, um, it came with a warranty, and we we had a leak in the cylinder. Oh, it was it might have been within the year. I think it was after the year warranty was up on it. But they noticed it was leaking immediately, and they were just kind of waiting to get in to fix it. That did go out, get fixed, came back, it's fine. They stood behind it. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's Atlantic Relo Atlantic uh, Recycling. Okay. Two doors down from us. Yeah. So. You know, it's kind of nice where we purchase it from someone that's right in town, and Absolutely. you know that certainly helps. The, we're scheduled to have a PM done on on all of them. Um, actually, this Thursday they're coming in to uh, check the oils, change the filters, go through them, grease them, lube them, check operations. So we do that once a year. So should we change the the source from a, a, a capital to an E since we're, I mean, it, it's almost like keeping a list up, uh, you know, keeping it on the list. If we talked last time, Caroline, it's a, you know, it's something to keep an eye on, but, you know, we don't know, well, we know roughly what it might cost, but we don't know when it, we would need it. So should we treat it just like the vertical baler and put a year out there greater than something? I, I like your thought about both balers changing them from CIP to E because they're they're really more equipment than capital probably. So we should change the funding source I think to those, um, and and keep an eye on them. They're listed at greater than twenty thirty. So I think it's just about revisiting it every year to see, mm -hmm. you know, since every year it's a ten year plan of a new set of ten years, we can see if it's time to start putting funding away. Well, thankfully, they're not huge ticket items. But yeah. But also on the Kwanzaa cut, should, those, should that also be, if, if we're going to leave a capital, should the purchase target year be something like greater than whatever we would think? So, and it just occurred to me, and I'm sorry, I have to say things when I think of them, because otherwise I'll forget. We have a Quonset hut that we ought to be accounting for and planning for its replacement. Okay. Like, I don't know, the building's probably good for 50 years, right? Well, at least, yeah. Oh, it's okay. still so in decent shape. I'm going to be gone. Yeah, yeah, that's the one that's sitting there. <laughs> I'm going to do some work to the back wall of it. But, yeah. You know, that's kind of bowing out. But. So, Ed, you are suggesting two Quonset huts for $20,000 total. Is no, that right? No, just one. Purchase one. One. Yeah, we have the we have the one that we have now, and I'm looking at down the road to purchase one to go over the appliances. To cost twenty thousand dollars. Okay. That's a ballpark number from right now. So we should list them out as Quonset Hut existing and Quonset Hut new. Yeah, right. Just to keep track of this stuff. Uh, yeah. Proposed. Well, at some point the, the current one might begin to fail or require. It may. I mean, is. Uh, it's really. I hope not in our lifetime. But. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't think so. It's up off the ground. It's probably, you know, a foot and a half off the ground. So it's up on concrete. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't touch the ground. It is, it's galvanized. The water and snow run off of it. Really, unless something becomes fatigued in it and it collapses, which is 
pretty unlikely. And as far as the trade line for the forklift? I would almost say the strike it. Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because once it comes off, it won't be something that... No, you know, we'd have to, I'd have to sell it to you again to get it back on. Yeah. Well, but like I say, with that little machine we got coming that was approved by the voters, I... It's on order, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's like everything else right now. When do we expect it? Hopefully before snow. <laughs> Very much so, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, they had nothing in stock there. The, uh, the attachments for it, I think, may be already in. That log cap, but the machine itself is just waiting for one to come in. I think he said he had seven of them on order. So I miss it. We we have a forklift now. No, no. This, okay. So we have a skid steer. I wanted to make sure. Yeah, the skid steer that Highway has okay. is shared between Highway and Transfer. The problem okay. with the skid steer, and it works, but it, you're sitting in the seat, and you've got you you can't turn you can't turn from from here down to see behind you. Mm -hmm. So you're going blind backwards out of the trailer. Um, you know, it's, it's straight back, but still, you just got to watch the sides. It does have a backup camera on it that helps. Does it have the overhead mirror? As well? No, the light mirror. No, it's, no, it's got a, it's got, a, it's got a camera right screen okay. here, and it's a good size little screen. So, it, and with that, you can look up at that, and it's, it's uh, joystick control. So you can see where you're going backwards, but. Has no, there been an incident at, incident at some point? No. Okay. No, no. Things have been good with it. Yeah. No, you just, nobody gets, nobody goes in the trailer when it's in there because it'd be very easy to get backed over. So you don't go in the trailer. You know, if there's anybody else there watching, they're off the ramp on the hot top. So, yep. Beautiful. So, yeah, I'm pretty cautious on that stuff. It's so we will strike the forklift. Yeah, I would say you could. Yeah. And we'll add a line for the new Quonset in addition to the existing Quonset. So can... Yeah, but the one that's on here, I think, is the new one that I'm looking to okay. get. Yeah. So there's only one. Right, so we still want to decide whether to purchase Target here for the new one. Yeah, just a, you know, yeah we'll be what, what do you think? A year. Yeah, should we just... Just to put a year up, right? Yeah, like yeah. Like, so we don't lose track. 24. Okay. Just so, to pick a number. For, for replacement of what? No, for, for a new concept. Okay, got it. Okay. Yes. And you said that there was some pending repairs to the current I've got some pending ball. repairs to the current one. I don't have any pricing on that. If you had to ballpark and we're not going to hold it to you. Oh. What do you lumber? I'm probably going to do it with, with lumber as opposed to metal. Would you do it yourself? I think we could. Yes. Oh, no, I know we could. I would. Yeah. Would we feel $1,500? Oh, sure. We've, we've built, we've built, yeah, we've okay. built so everything Okay, so it's not a major expense. No, no. You know, we've done it 1500 And it was the operating budget. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like budgeted for yeah. the operating budget. Yeah. What's happened is the, the back of it is corrugated. It's these large metal panels that, you know, come over and have a few bends in them that make them strong, stronger. But it's also about 16 feet tall. And what's happened over the years is as they put bales of uh, padwood in there, they'll lose a bale off the top of the last row. You know, and, and maybe in putting the next row in, that one will flip off and it hits the back wall. And it's not a very rugged wall. Once it gets a kink in it, it's now weakened. It's compromised. Yeah. yeah. So it's either take what's there now and kind of push it back in mm -hmm. place and support it with some heavier steel, which may be the way to go. Mm -hmm. or Tear it out and rebuild a two by six, two by eight uh, okay. wall. So. And have you looked at, or do you have any thoughts about the cardboard bailing building and the condition it's in, and when it might need a new roof or anything like that? Um, the building itself is pretty decent, other than being small, but. It's not worth adding on to. You know, it's not, we don't need to add on to it. Uh, if anything, if you're going to do that, I'd want to build a big building and just start again with something better. But the roof looks like but it's in the, good condition. The roof is in fair condition. It probably ought to be looked at. Um, those metal buildings, to re-roof them, you know, it's not, it, it's, 
you, you tear off what's there, there's insulation under it, you check that, you put new metal on so it. So it's an asphalt roof? No, no, it's metal. It's metal. It's metal roof. Yeah. So. What's the year of the roof? The year of the I building. would say when the building was built, and I don't have a clue on that. It's got to be at least 20, I would think. I would say early 90s, because it was yeah, probably built It was, the was there the when the transfer was. station was revamped. You know, prior to me coming, when, when the big wall was put in there. And, uh, what year did you come? I've only been there four years, going on five years. So. But I think it, it, you know, from what from the survey we saw, I think in that land I would swap, say. It, it, I think it's like early 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, it's all, it, I think it was on one of those plans that we looked at. So it was already existing at one point, but yeah. Yeah, it's in, it's in decent shape. So, I mean, for what it for what it does, you don't need the Taj Mahal to bail cardboard and collect paper in. <laughs> Have you heard from George to find out if he's in his truck on his way? Or? I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, but then he just we were also talking about maybe adjusting the meeting earlier for the Thursday, and now if it's going to be three. Either three to five. I think he said he specifically had a conflict with Thursday, but he didn't Tuesday. So I don't think Thursday is going to help him. He just says, let's see, he says, yeah, if you meet, meet the Rollins, he says, no, I have no changes. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, I am. Caroline was aware. Well, I was so. aware that he didn't have any changes. <laughs> I asked him to comment on his years and amounts, though. Yeah. And he. Yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, I could probably pinch hit if you want, but him and I kind of interchangeable, yeah, but. I think whatever you can add yeah, is something more than sure. yeah. Let me just give him a quick note back that I mean I guess the key would be any serious I mean so there aren't anything on the list changing. Other than the roof, if, if indeed that is gonna hit its target of twenty-five, because the loader is already a, a done deal. Mm -hmm. um, and the only next thing pending would be the roof, right, which has a year of, of twenty-five. I have 2024. I have 2024. If you, are you looking at the color version or the older? I'm um, at the color version that you sent in the most recent email. Yeah, yeah I, well, I, I didn't. I was 24, 25. Yeah. My, my, my point is, is, um, is that still an accurate target year? Okay. Is that the roof on the highway? Highway, highway, the highway yeah. That should be done sooner than later. Uh, we've been. Anytime now when we get a major windstorm, which we've had a couple of them this year, mm -hmm. we lose shingles. And we've lost a fairly large quantity of shingles. You know, I'm talking areas that are the size of this table. Kind of did, and I kind of sent a note to George about this because my son went through this where does the insurance cover that kind it of haven't been, It hasn't been a large enough uh, loss. Right, but I mean, even to replace the whole roof, because obviously you know, the whole roof is failed. That would be something above my head. Yeah. Have they been remedied? I don't think, I think it, it would be. Yeah, I don't think it would be. No, not as a man. I mean, my son had a windstorm come through and took off a few shingles. I mean, quite a few. But the end result was he had his insurance guy come in and they did That's that. Probably worth, it's probably worth it. It's probably worth it. I mean, if it's insured, it's worth having the. The I think next time there's an event, it's worth having them look at it, mm -hmm. but I don't think that they're going to go, like if you're missing this many shingles, I don't think yeah. they're going to get a whole new roof out of that. My son did. Um, no. but just, I mean, it's just something. Like it, so. Well, it is something. I it is, it, yeah, it is an odd roof. Or odd. I had a tree come down on, on my camp. I lost an area that was a size four by inch of the plywood. Mm -hmm. You know, poked a hole through, lost some shingles and whatnot. Uh, the insurance company paid a thousand dollars to do the whole roof, you know, yeah. based on you know the, the age of the building, and you can't match this area, you know. So this was the building maybe a, a year or two ago. Somebody said it was shingled wrong. Is this that? That's what they keep saying. I oh, don't okay. know whether they put enough nails in it or I, it almost looks like they nailed it too high. Yeah. So so yeah. the should the. You know, if this is your, your whole shingle, mm -hmm. and it's split pretty much in the middle, this yeah. is your visible part. It's almost they like they nailed it way up here rather than on the uh, tar strips. On the yeah. tar strips. Yeah. yeah. What um? How how have we been remedying these lost shingles? 
we just get the, there's a roofing company, is it Murphy? Right. Cut it over. Cut it back. The shingles and feather them in. They go back, yep. 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 They've been there twice this year and it's usually at least once a year they come pretty out. hefty price. It's it's I don't I haven't seen the bill, but I think it's like fifteen hundred bucks when it comes out. Mm -hmm. well, just to get them out, I think yeah. you have to pay that price. But yeah. what's the year of the roof? Two thousand eight the yeah. building was built. I was gonna say no, <laughs> the building was built two thousand eight, yeah. so and they, they didn't use a 25 or 30 year shingle? or It's not the fault of the shingles. I think he's right that it's, it's the about how it's the installer. It installed, but that roofer is not around anymore. Right. So we've, we've had the conversation about recourse and there really isn't yeah. any. And the other thing they did, the prevailing wind comes from the transfer station towards the highway building. Thusly, you would think when they put the ridge cap on, it would go this way so the wind blows over the top. They did it the other way so it uh, picks them up. Well, that's an indicator of... Yeah. Of poor, yeah. shoddy work. Yeah. We did get some pricing on re roofing it. But what's up there is just, there's only one layer up there. One right? layer of shingles. And have you been getting prices of an overlay or have you getting prices of a, a strip it taking and, down? Strip it and tell you, yeah. It wouldn't do any good, I don't think, to go over what's there. Because then. Well, there's not a strong base, right? No. I guess you, you, yeah. kind of, you can do two courses if you've got a strong base. But right. Strong yeah, base. I'd be afraid of the wind catching something and loosening the bottom ones again. It is beneath the shingles themselves. Is the entire roof have a have a have a water shield on it, or is it underneath the shingles? Is it truly the same? Don't recall. I think it was just the sheathing, but I'm not positive. Is it in? It's the whole because roof. Because the front of that is very steep. Yeah, it's a uh, salt box. It's a salt box. Basically, so it's just fast style. Yeah, um, one of the prices we got was 150 thousand for a roof. For a roof. For a metal roof? I believe that was a metal. Okay, I would think but I think one of the other yeah. prices was almost a hundred for shingles. It was, yeah, the prices were just staggering. Yeah, but a thirteen year old roof though, that's just that's just yeah, um, it's that's a unbelievable. Yeah. Because we were thinking, you know, metal would be the better way to go. Uh, we kind of priced it out ourselves and we come up with like well at the time we did it, which was before everything jumped in price, was around ten thousand in materials. But we can do a lot of things, but we're not going to do a whole roof that size. <laughs> we're pretty ambitious, but... Well, you'd have to pay disposal fees, which are not cheap when you're talking roofing shingles. They get right. expensive to, to pay to yeah. get them, you know, handled. Yeah. So if you got some estimates of, a, let's say, 100000 but here we're, we're putting only 45000 in 20... Should, should this 45000 be the true... Cost the estimate of, of replacement? Well, it depends on what year we need it. If, if it's something that can go three years, we could do it's a hundred thousand. Well, we could do right. less, but well, if, also, if, if, it's, a, if it's a next year estimate. thing, it's I something would, that we need to adjust. I, I adjust that number up considerably. So, yeah. but I think it depends on, on metal or asphalt. Yeah, it depends on what you want to do. Well, it behooves us to get prices on both and then, and then yeah. look at the trade-off. I mean, obviously, yeah. that's more, but your replacement right. time is going to be much greater. Right. So, Ed, you said it was um, 100000 for metal. I, I think it was closer to one hundred and fifty. Oh, my. But that was, it was also a standing seam metal roof, so it was like a really good one. The metal that we priced out was through uh, Middleton Building, so it's your basic corrugated metal. Uh, just simply overlaps and screws down, and you know the of course the roofers weren't real hip on that type of roof. The standing seam, you pretty much foolproof it, foolproof as far as leaking goes. I mean, it just sounds like it's something that should be taken care of. It's not going to fix itself. No, no. It's going to eventually and be a bigger fix. Yeah. Right? And every year we're putting a couple of grand into repairs. Yeah. That's it doesn't take you long to, you know. Yeah. Well, all it takes is one storm and that couple grand would right. be tens of thousands. We've had the roof around every year since George and I have been there. We've been there you know, in November. We're going on our 50th. So that's eight times. Four grand. times they've been there. Yeah. And I think one year, this as year, they were there twice. Well, I mean, I think a takeaway is one to check with the insurance company mm -hmm. to get some estimates on, on, on a replacement. I mean, I personally don't have a problem with shingles. I mean, my house was built in 93, and the shingles were all still pretty good. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty steep roof, which is a good thing to have. The, yeah, the front side is quite steep. The back side is not. All that is not as steep, but it's yeah. plenty steep yeah. for a shingle roof. 
Shingles would be fine if they're put on correctly. If they're put on correctly, that's yeah. the key word. You yeah. lose them off the front and the back? No, the front. Oh, okay. the steep pad. Oh, but it's so the way the wind hits it. But they're not as sheer to the layer beneath it. Right. 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 And what I'm saying is, if the back is okay, mm -hmm. we just address that. That's one point too. Yeah. yeah, I think no, we don't believe we've lost any off the back. But the back's going to be nailed the same as the front. So. But we haven't suffered any loss there, so maybe we can spread the roof replacement over two years yeah. instead of one year, half and half, yeah. you know? Although but probably by square area, if the steeper pine is probably less overall area than the flatter area. Very think, much right? so. The yeah. back is going to be a more expensive one. So maybe but it's worth getting a quote on just the front, just, just to try front. to... Yeah. Yeah. But also look so at it as a, as a 22, 23 purchase as opposed to a 24, mm. 25. Yeah. I mean, they're going to, if they do the front, they're going to put a new reach cap on. The reach cap covers the front and the back. Mm -hmm. You know, just in that little area. So when they do the back, they're going to have to peel that off to redo the, the back. But I'd recommend doing the whole thing at once. And you're not getting into this, how old is this, how old is that, versus, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I think if someone's coming out to bid it, once they measure it, they can give you a price on mm -hmm. the first half, the back half. You know, uh, I think your better deal would be on the whole roof because yes. I know it's a bigger right. job. It's worth it. You know, it's, it's going to be, you're going to get a better deal. Right. But it's a matter of. Right. And the whole setup is one time. It's one trip, mm -hmm. right. It's setting up the equipment once. Yeah. Um, and we can take care of the disposal of the shingles oh. on the transfer station side. Okay. So that's not. But there'll still be a cost associated with it. There'll be a cost. It won't be, it won't well, be a cost. We're not paying a middleman somewhere. Yeah. We're paying just. Yeah. It's like a wholesale cost. Wholesale wholesale cost. cost. We're paying 68 50 a ton. That's what we're paying. But he'll want to make his transportation fees and whatnot off that too, I suppose, if it's the, if it's the contractor disposing of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and whatever dumpster he, time, right? whatever yeah. dumpster he has coming in, I'll just pull a dumpster from out back, one of our spare ones, and set it up and say, there you go. So. Well, it sounds like this would be something we'd want to have Thursday. <laughs> that ain't happening, not, not getting estimates. We have some estimates from. Pre-COVID? When did we get those? I think they were just about the time things were starting to jump. Actually, it was from this spring. So well, that would be good because we could get those numbers. Price. We could we could probably add, be high. We could add some to those. Yeah. You know, to beef it up some, then we to know. And I mean, the nice thing is you're only going to pay what you're going to pay, so we can put away. Did you get pricing on both asphalt and metal? I believe so. Okay. I and George, so too. George did all that, so. Um, could you see if you can find those numbers and email them to me before Thursday, and then yes. I'll put them into. Yep. And get George's input on if indeed it's a. Yep. And not not discounting your opinion, but if indeed it is a, a next calendar year purchase, that's. Sure. That's a pretty important thing to know yep. for CIP. Yep. Yeah, that's probably the only major thing that we have looming over this. Anything else I think is a pretty decent shape. Um, I'm just looking down the list here. Um, no problems with the heating system boiler. That was a seventh, that was a 27 item. That's, there's no problem with that heating system. And everything else is further out that I wouldn't, I mean, they're all yeah. six, seven years out, so I don't really care so much about that. So you've had some issues with the backhoe, though, mm -hmm. recently. Do you still think that that's good until 2033? George has got a different plan that he's looking to do with that. Yeah, he mentioned, I think it was two years ago he mentioned getting rid of that altogether and getting a, something else. He'd like to get rid of it, replace it with a loader and a uh, mini excavator. And there's nothing for the articulate loader that could. No. There's no, no that's, that's small. That's just, small. That's just too small, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that doesn't fit in the same category. Yeah. And, um, and I guess the backhoe is a piece of equipment that's used frequently at the transfer station mm -hmm. versus it wouldn't make sense to rent when you need one. No. It's like a daily thing. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I use the backhoe over there a couple times a week. Okay. Yep. Yep. But that's something I'll let him talk to your folks about. Well, so I guess he wasn't going to present that this year then? Apparently, if he wasn't, he, when he left on... Wednesday or Thursday to go on vacation, he was 
thinking about it, but I think he was more thinking, I don't think he was thinking CIP, I think he was thinking Well, I think he was thinking budget. about 2022 instead yeah. of like 10 years of yeah. planning. I think, he was talking, I think he was thinking more budget than he was CIP budget. So Is he planning on bringing up the roof? I have no idea. I would hope he would have. If, if you might again. just mention those comments to him, yeah, see if you're going to talk to him, see if he wants to yeah. say anything about replacing his plan for replacing the backhoe, because sure. we would not want to fund that for 10 years if we should be funding something else instead. Absolutely. But also needing to know if the, if the roof is indeed a 2022 thing. Not three thing, 22 thing. I would definitely move the roof up to whatever the, whatever the soonest is we could do it. To me, that's. I mean, if you're losing shingles off of it every time you get a major windstorm, there's an issue. Yeah. And the last time, like I said, the last time we lost shingles, it was an area the size of this table that went. And uh, I, I think it was just plywood under it, if I'm not mistaken. Well, and then the choice, as far as insurance purposes, if it was improperly installed, yeah. the insurance company would walk right out that loophole. I mean, it was yeah. improperly installed. You know, that's, that's, you know. But that'll be up to them to determine. You know, that's just you know, one roofer's idea against another. So. Well, a 13-year-old uh, roof failing yeah. is clearly a sign of a failure. Yeah. And it's also dangerous when those shingles start flying. You don't want to be outside because there they go. Thank you for stepping up and sure. bringing these things to our attention outside of your realm. Mm -hmm. well, we kind of work. Yeah. We work pretty close together all day. Mm -hmm. And I was hired on hired as highway, but been given transfer station too. So it's yeah, we just work. Thank you, sir. Everything that both of us do is we'll know. Yep. And the funny part behind this, he's probably at my house right now. <laughs> You got a new puppy and his wife did dog class at one. That's really funny. So, yeah. So, but well, some of us are dog people. So. Yes. Yeah. He's excused. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Yeah. I won't go into it. He's, he's not a dog person, but he's fallen in love with this one. <laughs> Which is really cool. Okay. So, as far as the rest of the equipment goes, you know, trucks and whatnot. We're in pretty decent shape. You, you'll get repay, you'll get breakdowns, which we have had our fair share this year on highway. But that's not um, generally CIP. No, no, that's no, no, it's operational. So, yeah, yeah. And as far as the backhoe goes, um, you know, we've had some breakdowns with that, but it sounds like there's still decisions being made on that. I think so. Yeah, so I'll let him. We don't want to bring that one forward to you. Yeah. So I will get a hold of him and see if he can. Do you have time Thursday night then for him or? Yeah. Well, I think if he has something, you I, know. I think if he can communicate through email, yeah, speak to what you spoke about, that gives me enough to. Yeah, you know, I, I just, just need to know where this room, you know. Yeah, amounts yeah. in years. I don't think he necessarily. That's really what looking yeah. at. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, looking, I'm sure we got those estimates right, right in the office. And if we just add, I don't know what you'd add to them, 15, 20% now probably, would get us. Speaking for myself, I would like to see a split between front and back, okay. yeah. and also all, and also metal and asphalt. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's a lot to ask, but yeah, no, I think we've got the metal and asphalt. The split might content. be a little difficult, but we could almost do that by square footage. I don't think you can do metal as a half and half though, where it's all. Actually, you probably couldn't asphalt. because of the cap on it. Well, you might be. We'd be though. redoing the cap twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. No, I do you remember the metal? I believe was one hundred and fifty thousand. Because when we saw that, it's like, oh my word. Yeah, but it's going to be a little more expensive. We do the metal over two years. It's going to be a lot more expensive. Yeah. Yep. So that's yep. also a factor. Yep. Wow. Well, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, folks. Thank you. Thank you. So. Is this pretty much a wrap then for tonight? The only thing I would, the only other thing I'd want to bring up is, is we have, um, I, I corrected the 76 
thousand dollars that needs to be allocated onto projects that you see on the bottom in kind of that red rusty color, CIP balance to distribute. So those are funds received through that taxation warrant article that needs to be placed onto projects. So in other words, some of that's already been spent in projects that were funded the same year. Um, this is the difference. So it's not actually 76, it's, I, I redid it and it's 68. So you can't see that. Um, but I guess where I'm at with this is, is two things. We need to consider how to, um, how, what would make sense for allocate, allocating funds there. And then also, um, we have 10 years worth of funding to distribute while also watching the bottom line to try to make the bottom line um, not erratic. Um, but like steady, you know, increasing steadily over time. So, um, I'm wondering, Joe, how um, how much fun you have with spreadsheets, and and how much you want to. Um, I don't. I I can spend some time on this. Um, I can certainly make the adjustments that um, Ed proposed tonight. But there's a good amount of work involved in trying to figure out. Um, how to how to work out those payments over ten years and, and make the bottom line make sense and, and divide it up into equipment versus CIP and this spreadsheet last year's version had that broken out from mm -hmm. equipment versus CIP funding the spreadsheet doesn't work that way anymore because I couldn't find a live working version of mm -hmm. that one so this one presents that way but it doesn't work that way yet. So um, I would love some help with that, but if not, I can do the best I can. I almost met it. people starting from scratch. And it'd be a lot of work to, it's just, it's a messy spreadsheet and there's all these hidden calculations. And that, yeah, um, yes, there are. <laughs> yeah, if, if you want, I'll take it, make whatever change. I mean, I have some notes, so if you do it and then I'll be the check on the changes for today. Okay. And then I'll um, I'll take a shot at I mean as, as again as I kind of look at this, it's almost like here are the capital projects, here are the equipment, and you want to keep track of them, but they're all mess, yeah. messed mm -hmm. up. Yes, and and, and so if the answer to that is to have another um, keep going with the spreadsheet, and you know all the equipment at this point is in is in police, and now mm -hmm. just maybe one thing or, or two things in the transfer station, but do we want to divide that out and maybe put orange bars to separate a whole new depart police department equipment, yeah. Yeah. transfer station equipment, and, and completely <coughs> separate it out? Um, and that might, the technical part of that with the spreadsheet if might you, work If you want to make the changes tonight and then send me what you have, I'll take a crack at saying, well, if I were doing this, here's what I, because I, I think I'm getting a sense of what the committee needs and what makes it easier to look at. I might, I might still be missing some things, but I'll kind of put that ignorance into my thought on how it should Yes, work. and that's all that it ever is, and that's all that Suzanne used to ever do with this. This was her creation, which is brilliant, but it's not the only correct version yeah. of how to present information. Right. I like the presentation aspect of breaking it out separating the two different bars, but I like I like seeing it all together as well. But, and I don't, but I can't ways. speak to the techno technological yeah. aspect of it because I'm not real savvy there, but I do like breaking it out so visually, it, it, you know, we can see where the money's kind of coming from. Yeah, out. I mean, in, in general, I mean, this is a nice presentation with, with the bars segregating stuff, but in general, they all are separate rows with just an attribute that says this is the highway department, this is the transfer station, this is their capital improvement, this is an expense item. So you almost can get that raw data and then after that it's easier to present on whatever anybody has. Versus it, it looks like the, the spreadsheet is one of, well this will be the presentation, let me put the data into the exactly. presentation. I would take it back a step to just the normalization of it. I, I think, think that's simpler and easier. Yeah, you're talking my language. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
will put my kids through school. <laughs> yes, I'm with you. That's great. Um, and then, I, I, again, back to the what is actually $68,000 to allocate toward projects, I think is something to consider when we start deliberating over what are we going to present to the board. On the one hand, the point of this is to put money away for projects into the future. Um, on the other hand, when you're faced with a $150,000 roof that has to happen pretty quickly, yeah. you know, what do we want to do with $68,000? Well, we see this every year. We yes. see something that dramatically advances and it's a pile of money, and we, we, we've seen this every year, and we're scrambling, you know, bond versus... I mean, this is well, the side. Yeah. Well, and until something else gets sacrificed, so so until the select board can manage the big picture in such a way with the school to see the tax impact in any given year and decide we're going to sacrifice and, and present that, communicate this to the public, that we're going to make sacrifices over the next two to three years in one area, maybe paving, in order to really bump up this payment so that we're really funding these things and, and get this payment to where it really ought to be. But that payment was not what the, this year's $200,000 payment was not what this committee, it was not as much as this committee no. recommended. It was, so yeah. we're, not, we're not where we need to be, but at the same time, and I don't fault, fault the select board for that, there are competing needs. But we need to hear from all the department heads just to know what's on our plate to begin with this year. We just right. got hit with 150 that's moved up from 24. Which is why I'm not <laughs> suggesting so that we... So now we hear something else can be pushed back. You, you know, it's a, it's a balance act. Which is why I'm not suggesting that we mm -hmm. decide tonight what to do to, with $68,000. No, not, not without all the information. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I may, you send this, I may come back and do some a call to you. There's a couple things here I don't understand. Um, like even that sixty-eight thousand dollars. I don't. That's one of the numbers I don't understand on this spreadsheet. Is that so? One of the things that you'll see on this spreadsheet when I send it to you is that there's another tab, mm -hmm. which keeps track of the amount from taxation that came in, two hundred thousand dollars this year, minus all million. the capital items that we've spent, yeah. which we change into actual dollars once we know how much we're spending, because it's yeah. not always the same, mm -hmm. um, plus whatever interest from the trust fund account yeah. equals what the balance is. And because of that interest, um, this number is, th there's always money there. This that, is what's left over. Yeah. The taxes that came in, everything else what went out. There's $68,000. Okay. Yes, okay. And, and to me that's still high. Like, like you know, something was missed in the allocation throughout the year because mm -hmm. there's certainly not $68,000 worth of interest, but at the same time, I, I went through this no. rich... <laughs> no, there's not, I'll tell you there's not. But I did, um, I did, you know, start with the old spreadsheet and I went through the town report and I, um, you know, all the things that were done and spent, you know, the money that went toward them, I, I did make sure that money was represented in those lines. So, um, not to say I didn't miss something, but I'm not sure if, if there was a place where that $68,000 was intended that I may not have. Do we, and I, maybe this is important, I'm just trying to understand the process. When, when the town makes a payment for something that was scheduled for 2021, does that payment go out with any kind of code that says this is, in other words, do each of these items here have a unique code that identifies a particular item so you can relate it to any payment that's happening? The accounting software has um, an, account, an account, like a special line in the budget, so to speak, mm -hmm. in the capital category for that item. So okay. it gets the $50,000 in revenue put in it and then the... Okay however many, you know, whatever in expenses against it. So you can see how much money is left that you didn't expend. Okay. And All right, that'll, that's the stuff. I'll look at the spreadsheet and get a better understanding, and then we'll talk. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for that. Now, as far as the time for Thursday's meeting. Yes, Miles and Aaron, we were talking about maybe meeting at 6 to see if we could make more out of that meeting because that's our last opportunity to hear from Miles' as, you know, Miles as input on deliberating. I'm fine at 6, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, let me add, who's gonna who's gonna take your spot? Because it's gonna. I, well, I guess we'll, whoever it is, we're gonna have to sit down and, and do a knowledge transfer. Not you necessarily, but that person. Correct. Okay. I mean, it might be one of the existing board members or whoever they choose to appoint. But but if we can be done with the process, right. yeah. then I'm sure the existing board would appreciate that because they're going to be yeah they're, mm -hmm. they're they've got they're, a lot they they've got a lot going on so in that way it would be helpful if it could just be done but it yes. certainly may not be and I don't want to rush this group into a decision either no I think we should have the mindset that we're going to spend some time Thursday yep that's fine six okay I'll renotice it thank you. I had tonight's meeting on my calendar for six, so oh. <laughs> I did not show up at six. And you've already confirmed fire and police for security. But but I know that um, the police chief can easily do six, so I'm not concerned about that. And we've seen his we've seen his report. And and yeah. that's I printed it just in case you. I saw it online. Yeah. Okay. Is just on that? Is he? Saying that he's going to move, is he suggesting to move away from leasing to purchasing? Yes, and I, I highly support that because yes, there is not a benefit into leasing, and the, and the administrative yeah. burden is. And that's not something we only began doing a few years ago. A few years ago. We and, and it was because there was two years in a row of, of a cruiser, and so it was the chief's right. attempt to try to break out payments more evenly, which isn't really necessary because that's really the point of the CIP anyway. Right. So it, you know. Right, it was to extend the mileage or, or put some miles on the lease to buy more time than the two that were currently going to be up in this. But we still could have purchased two mm -hmm. rather than leasing two. It just helped break out payments. But, you know, because we have the CIP, I don't think it's necessary. No, I saw the value of leasing at the time, but I, I you know. But having it put it on the warrant for every payment. Right, 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 right. I, I would suggest that we never lease again unless you're going to lease for a term that makes it, you know, we can, you know, that allows us to do something we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Because if, because somebody has to remember to put that lease payment on the warrant every year. And if you miss that or it fails, then it comes out of operating. But the, but the lease was a response to a situation that we're currently in to, to sort of get us through a period. It and has now, its value. And now we're through. Now well, we, right. Now but, we should think about setting But over three years, I'm suggesting right. that if it's a three-year lease, we can probably work that out with the funds in, in this plan. Whereas if it's of a magnitude that we need to break it out over like six or seven years, <coughs> then, then maybe that makes the project worthwhile and we can afford to bump it up because it needs to be bumped up. That's, that's a different I'd reason rather, to consider leasing when I otherwise wouldn't. I'd rather put the energy into finding a way that works with purchasing. Thank you. Yeah. Me too. Yes. But I mean, doesn't the, I mean, I just think of it personally. If, if I had to do something and it, it was an unknown or whatever, I still wouldn't lease. Might take out a home equity loan. Might do something else. Does the does municipalities not have that option to, in other words, to use a loan to smooth out payments because the loan will still be cheaper than the lease because at least at the end of your term. You have an asset. At the end of the lease, you don't have anything. We actually do here have the way the municipal wor lease works is that we do three equal payments, which ends in a dollar, and we own it. So okay. it's it's really like a payment plan rather than we call it a lease and and they call it a lease, um, but it's not like a personal lease where you okay. have to give the car back or pay for it all. So even these on here, while they say lease, it's really it is a purchase plan. It's a purchase plan. Okay. Yeah. We do own them in the end. But I think you were talking about more of a line of credit? Or? Well, for other things. Okay. The roof, as an example. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had it down here at 45000 Talking to Ed, it could be 100000 mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't want to put it off so long because you don't have the immediate money that you make a bigger problem down the road, but you might still yes. want to get it done and have a way of encompassing the money over the next couple of years that is by default are going to be part of your normal Warren article, but are just going to do something that's a long term benefit that is kind of like something from two years ago that you yes. allocated it out. So we do have options with that as long as the short term interest remains at least a dollar in the operating budget so that we can pay for that interest in having a loan. It's cheaper to get 
a bond than a loan, mm -hmm. but the there are different kinds of hitches with that. It's an extraordinary administrative burden mm -hmm. that has to happen in advance of a vote at town meeting that has certain procedures attached to it that are different from how town meeting would otherwise go. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not simple and easy, but it certainly serves a purpose if you need it to. But it also doesn't make sense unless you're borrowing a certain amount of money. And you can yeah. combine projects to make it work, yeah. it, which is what we did with renovating the transfer station and buying a fire truck at the same time. Mm -hmm. and, and they break out. You, you can't bond for more than the life of what you're buying. Um, which would be fiscal sense anyway, yeah, but you know, <laughs> that's not necessarily always what would happen. Um, but you can um, you, you can combine projects and then have the payment for this be 10 years and the payment for that be 15 years because yeah. of the different projects that you're doing. Okay. Banking, I think, would be a whole lot simpler, but your interest rate in normal times would be higher. Yeah. Than, so. And I don't know what the authority of that is outside of, I think you'd still have to put it to town meeting right. to get yeah. approval. It would just be simpler approval. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So do I call this meeting to an end now? Or do I... If you're ready, Mr. Chairman. I'm ready. All right. Okay, okay so the meeting's open at 721. 6 o'clock Thursday. 6 o'clock Thursday. Okay. Excellent. Right. Thank you all. I feel so powerful. <laughs>